for you, Melissa, what are, what are some players to watch? You know, maybe some players that you think that that audiences should perhaps keep an eye on uh, on the pitch in, in between these two friendlies. Like uh, like a true Colombian form, uh, our midfield is usually our strongest. Um, you know, it goes back even to the men's side where, you know, back in the day, El Pibe was, was the 10, the creative player, where similarly, I think part of our culture and our tactic, uh, we we share that similarity uh, in, in our play. Our key player is Catalina Uzme, who is a veteran player, a uh, good friend of mine. And right now she plays for America um, in Cali in the Colombian Women's Pro League. Surprisingly, she's one of the top players who actually hasn't played overseas. She wanted to stay in Colombia and help be part of the, the Colombian Pro League and, and, and be a major uh, part of it. And so what she can provide is just, one, leadership. Uh, two, she's super technical. She's a lefty, but also incredible with her right foot. So she uses both feet, uh, able to switch the point of attack very easily. Um, her shots are wicked. This is the player that during the 2016 Olympics against the U.S. Women's National Team uh, scored the, the two goals against Hope Solo when Hope Solo, one fumbled one of the free kicks in between her legs, and the other one was a gol olimpico, which is a mm -hmm. the corner kick. Yep. So this was that player. And, you know, I, I understand that those were goalkeeping mistakes, but uh, this is how she is, though, even from outside the box. She's able to whip shots uh, from, from far so Catalina Uzme is definitely one of the key players to watch out for in the midfield. Uh, another one is Lacey Santos, who plays for Atletico de Madrid. And she also in the midfield, but she'll also be able to provide uh, a more quick uh, in an attacking style of play. While as Uzme, yeah, she's, she's, she's able to be creative and, and hold the ball with, with her strength. Lacey is more of the quick, quicker player, um, yeah. able to distribute quickly, get involved in the attack with, with the nine. Um, so Lacey Santos is, is, is definitely one of the most, I guess, the, the top figure on, on the team for sure uh, at the moment. Um, in the midfield, we also have Daniela Montoya, who is a veteran. Um, she sits back a little bit more defensively. Liana Salazar, also a midfielder. Now, I think um, the one striker to really look out for, and she's our, our promise, is Linda Caicedo. Um, you'll see her. She's, she's, she's petite, but fast up up top um she's i believe she must be at this point 18 years old she's very young but she has been making strides in the colombian women's league uh one of the top goal scorers alongside catalina usme and i unfortunately i had already retired before being able to play with linda but from what i hear from my friends and my teammates playing with linda is, is incredible i mean she has so much future so they'll definitely be putting her into the rotation uh, lastly, I think in terms of uh, goalkeeping, it will be probably up to Sandra Sepulveda, mm -hmm. who's usually our, our most capped goalkeeper, uh, who we've seen in World Cups and Olympics. It'll be either her or Catalina Perez, who played in the last, uh, I believe she played in the last friendlies, but she's also been uh, one of the top goalies. I, she, she was in and out of injury over the past year or two, but I think towards the end of her her campaign in the last Spanish league, uh, she started playing again. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting though. Just like the U S there's a lot of changes. There's a lot of new faces. There's a lot of youth players, even players that are still playing in youth club that have been called up, uh, two Colombian Americans, uh, similar to myself, uh, one that is playing in the second division in Spain and has been in and out of the Colombian national team over the past year or two. And then another one who, is is still at the club level, but just signed uh, to start in, I think this August for Arizona. So she's young. Yeah, name drop them. Name drop them, Melissa. Whoa, 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 wait! I got it. it's Alexa. Alexa is the one that's playing in Spain. Alexa yes. Bar. She's playing in Spain for Racing de and then, Santander. And then Angela, Angela, Angela Baron, um, and she plays for Kick Soccer Club uh, in the USA, a uh, youth soccer club. But it's going to be an incredible experience for her to be so young and uh, whether she plays or not, I mean, wow, this, this for her is going to be a, a moment in her career. That she'll always remember, um, especially getting in early. This is, this is a fantastic way to develop players, but we could touch more on, on what this friendly means too for, for Colombia, which is crazy to, to, in my opinion, to schedule against the U S before 
the Copa America. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get into that, um, I love all these names that you mentioned, and and thanks for running through all of those, especially the Colombian Americans, giving them a shout out. There's a lot of young names, right? A lot of young talent on this Colombian roster. So to give them this type of experience going up against the United States and in the United States playing these friendlies, that's huge. And that helps shape them. Um, but there's a lot of names missing on this roster that um, a, a lot of fans are surprised about as myself when this roster came out, I was definitely surprised about that. So let's talk about some of the names that aren't on this roster uh, because it's been a topic of conversation and transition in the United States going from the veterans and, and their leadership to this newer, younger generation. But with Columbia, um, Melissa, for you, which are the biggest names that are not on this roster? Definitely the, the top two names is one, Natalia Gaitan, who has been the captain in and out uh, for since 2005, I believe. Uh, she was, or, or, or later, she was 15 years old when she joined the national team. And, and she has always been the leader, even during my time. Um, and she was one of the captains for Sevilla over the past year and has been at Sevilla. Before that, she was five years at Valencia. Um, she's the type of player that should be on the squad. Ask me why. I don't know. Um, the other one is Isabella Echeverri, who was also captain at Sevilla. Uh, right now is not uh, renewing her contract. Right now is in, in trying to, well, they're negotiating to see what team she'll be going to uh, and what league. But this is another player who has played in the World Cup, in the Olympics, uh, played in here in the U.S. at the university level, and then went off to Spain to play professionally. That's surprising. And I say this to all of you that are listening, that it's surprising because the press keeps on putting it on Twitter as well in Colombia. You know, where are these two players? Actually, there's two more that are missing. Uh, one is Yoreli Rincon, who plays for Sampdoria in Italy. And she also has been a veteran for very many years. And uh, it, I feel like there's a lot of political reasons behind this and why mm -hmm. these players aren't being called up. I don't think they can... I don't think the staff of the Federation is able to supply an actual legitimate response as to why they're not being called to play in these friendlies in preparation for the Copa America, our World Cup qualifying tournament. And then lastly, uh, Vanessa Cordoba's uh, goalkeeper played in Mexico in this last season. Very good. Um, yeah, she definitely should be on the roster as well. But again, like we also have good goalkeepers. So it's it's. Like in any camp in making any roster, it's always going to be a challenge. The competition is always is, is tough. But, yeah, these players are, are surprising, especially, especially Gaitan, Echeverri, yeah. and, and Rincón. Well, so what is the press saying in Colombia for those that aren't uh, keyed in on that on Twitter? They just keep saying, oh, why aren't these players playing? Mm -hmm. And they keep saying what is in Spanish, vetadas, so vetadas, which in English, uh, we're trying to figure out their translation. <laughs> the show but it's something like i don't know if it's like uh not not banned it's like time uh, out yeah i guess they're on, yeah, time on out. punishment maybe yeah. like we were like melissa and i were like how would we like translate this into english but i, I guess maybe like perhaps we thought yeah. maybe like on punishment it would, could be like mm -hmm. kind of something like that and it's unfortunate you know i i, yeah. I just i think um you have to bring attention to that because of the type of games that these are you know, and it's on the one hand, it's like, oh, it's it's a pair of friendlies during a June international window. Sure. But it's a pair of games against for at least for Colombia side of things. It's a pair of games against the number one ranked team in the world. So that's a huge opportunity right there. And then number two, it's it's a pair of friendlies before the next the qualification. It's the Copa America. It's it's huge. Yeah. Uh, so it's like you have to bring attention to this. So I don't you know, I, you have to give credit here to to those in the media in Colombia who are trying to bring this up or, or talk about it a little bit because it's it should be something that people are taking notice of yeah. and especially when you're talking about the caliber of players like you're making note of Melissa the fact that it is somebody like Gaiton who's been a part of this squad for a very long time for perhaps I think for a lot of people maybe the face at one point um, yeah. mm -hmm. and to not sort of have that leadership and that experience and talent, quite frankly, um, as part of these types of games or going into Copa America, it, it's at putting it politely, it's curious. It's quite curious, I guess, is the polite way uh, to put it. So I, uh, I, it's unfortunate to sort of 
imagine that these type of players are perhaps being, you know, on punishment still, I guess is the English way we're putting it. Um, and uh, I would hope that in something like a Copa America or past that, you know, it, you know, you punch, say Colombia punches their ticket to the World Cup that you start, the, these players can start being integrated back yeah. into, back into the program and back yeah. into the system. And, and you mentioned punishment and I imagine a lot of listeners are like, well, punishment for what? Well, um, this is, this is speculation because we can never say why they're not being called up. Is it because of the, you know, changing up the roster? Is it because of passing the torch from veterans to the youth? Who knows? But, you know, it's a little bit, uh, obvious in a way that in 2019 when we spoke up against the federation um these were key players in the movement against the federation that literally swept swept them off their feet uh and 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 exposed the truth to many wrongdoings that they had been doing for many years and it could be that now you know we fast forward just a few years later that they could be potentially paying the price for it you know and again this is speculating but this happens in many federations, and we look at Mexico with Charlene Corral, uh, who is obviously yeah. the top goal scorer of all Mexican league right now, and she's not yeah. getting called up to the national team. So uh, there's a lot of political ties that go on, unfortunately, and I just feel terribly, terribly sad for my teammates that are not able to be part of such a yeah. monumental moment of hosting a Copa America at home yeah. in Colombia after so many i mean decade of being on the team but yeah, yeah i mean that's a, a conversation that probably needs to be had at a higher level and if it ever happens i hope it does but yeah it is it is kind of what it is 